Hi, my name is Juan Rangel, and for assignment one was digital forensics. We only have like around eight minutes, so it'll be really fast. I'm gonna go through all these steps, and we're gonna start by creating a file. She already did. Just gonna do it again. Save and delete. Okay. Now our next step will be we can explore the different forensic acquisition tools listed in the book and what the formats for the image files we can we can see. Okay, so there are the the raw formats and the proper um proprietary formats, which are the type of formats that each acquisition tool has that is very unique and can be used probably won't be able to be used in different tools so um you can explore the different tools i try to use in this one the autos auto psi auto spy and it's very slow um when i was trying to make a copy of the local disk it took me more than an hour and it wasn't even complete so I really don't recommend using this one unless you really need to explode many different um, files. It has a lot of detail when you are trying to make a copy of it. You can explode a lot with this tool, but it takes a lot of time. This one is very quick. And so physical drive is a, for the USB. Mm, image destination. These are the four type of formats for the image files copies that you want to make so this is the raw the dd which is very fast um but it doesn't contain the metadata and might not come with the md5 hash so this is the advanced forensic acquisition format this is for another forensic tool and so on and so on okay this is the raw Case number, make sure you use the proper case number given, evidence number 111. So I'm going to usually write the name of the person who's going to be doing the forensic um, acquisition. Write some notes, maybe of the date or um, the place where it was found the evidence or, you know, anything related to the case. The destination folder, we're gonna create a new folder, the USB red, and different folder, not the same one. Make sure it's not the same USB that we're trying to acquire. Try to allocate the copy in a different file, usually an external file. Um, it also let us have different segments for each copy. So if, it, if the file is too heavy, um, we can split in two files, two different files, or we also can combine it, like put it all together in one file as well. Encryption, no. Okay, it's one tool. This is the one that I personally like. Um, no, wait, I'm just gonna look at this one first. This one is also good, it has a lot of um, features. We continue using free version. So I manage a new case, pretty much work the same as probably discovered on the all the tools, um, we can create hashes, different types, MD5, SHA-256, one, we just find the copy of the file, and then we create a hash for that file, and then if we have another copy with the, with the hash, we can make a comparison of the hash, and see if, if it's the same, and it hasn't been corrupted, then the file it's legit and can be used in the court as an evidence. If it's been corrupted, then it will say there is not much and um, the evidence is not going to be used for, for the case. Okay. okay. Signatures, drive preparation, drive imaging, mounting a drive. Has many different features here, um, which is pretty good. So now we're going to use Pro Discover Basic. This is the one we're going to use for our assignment. Mm. Okay, now we need to discuss about search warrant chain of custody and white blocker devices. 
sorry, a search warrant is um is like a law enforcement um paper. So it will allow the officers to go to the suspect's property, vehicle, or even gain access to the suspect's um, computers if it's needed in order to find evidence for a, for a case. So without a search warrant, you, won't, you probably won't be able to access to the suspect's devices, vehicle, or properties because of the very strict privacy laws such as in the US and I think it's the Fourth Amendment and in Australia as well you might need a search warrant. Chain of custody is like the a form that you have to fill up when you are starting a new case. So pretty much you have to um, uh, keep records of the evidence from the moment you find the evidence and acquire the evidence, who acquired the evidence, who took the evidence and where is the evidence well um is being tagged or who is the one who is acquiring the evidence so from the moment you acquire the evidence to the moment the case is closed or until it's taken to the um to court that all the all this um route has to be recorded in the chain of custody form and the right blocker's device is something that looks like a um let me show you. Oh, project number one one one. Project file name one run hell. See a number fourteen seventy four. Okay, this is a right blocker. So it's very important to have the right blockers right before we start touching anything on the hard disk. So we don't want to corrupt the hard disk and we want to make sure um, it can be used as an evidence. So every time we try to access the, the hard disk, we might accidentally um, start right on the hard disk. So we have to use this right blocker, right blocker and connect the hard disk to the right blocker which is going to be connected to your workstation which is your laptop where you have all your forensic tools so that's the right blocker right here um seven minutes so, so how are we going to acquire the data um so we're going to use pro discover basic and we're going to do um, a static acquisition okay now we're going to create a forensic image of the USB along with the description of each step. So we recreated the case. Mm -hmm. Click on Add, Capture. We're going to use um, USB Blue, Destination. USB red, call it USB blue, one, one, one. Technician name will be my name because I'm doing the forensic acquisition. Image number one, 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 description, Simon one. We, um, so the different type of formats, so we can do only two of them, the raw format, which is the DD format, you can use in Linux, um, and the ProDiscover format, which is the EV extension. Okay, so we can also split if we want to, if the size is too big, we can just split in different sizes, like 250 MBs, but we won't do it that. <clears throat> No, we can also use a password, like encrypted. Okay, so while we wait here, the good thing about this um, acquisition tool is that it says the estimate time remaining is nine minutes. And as you can see here, it's using the MD5 hashing algorithm to verify the um, validity of 
the copy if it hasn't been corrupted okay later on we're gonna validate it and see if it's if it works in the meantime it's gonna stop so there are different techniques to um, different hashing algorithms uh, we already mentioned the MD MD5 and in the other tools they let us use other hashing algorithms which are the SHA-1 um, where is it? no, not here in this one you're telling us the type of algorithms that we can use to encrypt a file Okay. So here are the different type of um so I got um the image file is complete. So we're gonna get um the image file plus some other files let's have a look at it um probably get yeah the log errors i was gonna show you if there was any errors while making the image file so the extension of the file for this format it's dot eve now we are going to proceed with the so i was showing you the hash the hash algorithms the type of encryption that we can do with other forensic tools there are three four types here mm, however on pro discover we only have the md5 okay so um, in content view we've got this So here we can see all the deleted files. Um, deleted, yes, yes, yes. So this is the actual file text that was deleted. Um, we can later on have a look at it. So how are we going to implement the validation techniques to calculate the hash value of this file? So we go to the report. We can see here this is the MD5 checksum of the file that we just copied. Yeah, so this is the checksum validated. No, it hasn't been validated yet. So what we're going to do? We're going to the image file. Um, what is it? Nope. Mm, it's here. Coverage. Verify image checksum. That's what we're going to click on. USB blue 111, verify it, and that's going to take some time to verify. So, once the validation is complete, ProDiscover is going to let you know the checksum is verified and correct. So, now if you go back to the report, in this case, Back to the um, evidence report for this project. Go back to it. so check some validated. Yes, it has been validated now. That means the evidence is not corrupted and it can be used as evidence um, for this case. Now, what we're going to do to recover the deleted files is so we already used the uh, image file here. So, already here, the content view. Cluster view, we can also see um, the sections of the um, actual drive has been used. So if we only use these clusters, um, it's another way to find the information that we need when it's full of files and it has to, and it's very hard to go through every single file. We can just 
go on search and click on content search results on cluster mm, no So we're going to select all the matches and we look for one from hell just use keywords that we might think of finding so we use the name of the file that we use use the numbers my student id um, and then we select the disk the disk image Mm -hmm. then click ok and there you go we found two files that has been deleted now these are the md5 checksum of each file mm -hmm. so we added to the report We can add comments to the evidence that we added to the report. So we can say we found evidence match for then click on name. So we are in comments to the evidence that we find. And then if you go back to the report later on, um, total evidence items of interest was one. And this is the checksum deleted, the date when it was deleted, the cluster chain, and the investigators comments, what we just said. Evidence found one run hell fourteen fifteen ID number and where it was found and what else the results. So here is where we see all the uh, match of the search logs. So this is what we type four hits on twice and okay. That is it for today. Now we can just save the project us uh, so I mean one